Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Probability Measure. And in here we're going to look at the properties of set functions. And with a lot of videos in this little mini-series or this playlist, I can't go back and define every term again because it would make the video too long. So I encourage you to watch a few of these videos sequentially in the playlist. We're going to introduce these properties as a theorem. So let mu be a finitely additive set function on the field f then the measure oh that's a good point it's not a measure because it's just a set function so far measure means that it's non it's a non-negative set function so mu of the empty set right where mu is the set function is equal to zero mu of the a intersect or a union b plus mu of a intersect b is equal to mu of a plus mu of b now a lot of these are intuitive but we're going to go through and prove them and this is for all a sets a b in the field f now if a and b are in the field and b is a subset of a then the following three properties hold that mu of a is equal to mu of b plus mu of b minus a. Um, if also mu of b is less than infinity, then this relationship holds. If we know that in addition to this, that you know mu of a minus b is positive, then we know that mu of b is less than or equal to mu of a. If mu is a non-negative function, then this relationship holds. It's called uh, finite additivity. Um, mu of the intersection from 1 to n is less than or equal to the addition of the individual sets from 1 to n. Now, if mu is a measure, and actually, since mu is non-negative, it's a measure in this setting too, but if it's a measure on the sigma field f, then it, it holds for infinity. So the mu of I minus, um, you know, mu of the intersection of the sets is always less than the addition of the sets. And this is for all sets such that the intersection is still in F, the sigma field. So let's just go through the properties. Let A be in the, the field F such that it's uh, less than infinity, so it's a finite measure, finite set function, then mu of A is equal to the union of mu of A union the empty set, right? This is, this is still A, but since it's finite additive, then it's the addition of the individuals but look, we have mu of a is equal to this. So if we subtract that to the other side, we get mu of the empty set is zero. Now here, um, mu of a can be thought of as the intersection of a, b unioned with a minus b, right? So this means, you know, whatever the intersection is, but this says it's a, but take away the intersection of a, b. So if you... If you put those two together, you get A, and then since mu is finite additive, then it's the addition of these individual terms. And the same way with B, we can think of it as the addition of the uh, mu of these individual sets, right? Because this union this is B. But if we add these two functions, this plus this is here, and then we get one of these, and then these three pieces will just kind of group them. And since the you know the intersection a minus b and b minus a are all you know if you take those in union them, you get a union b. And since mu is finite additive, it's just this, right? Well, that's what we wanted to show is this relationship. Now, for i, uh, mu of a is equal to b union a minus b, right? So this is a, take away b, but then add it back, you get this. And remember that b is a subset of a. Since it's finite additive, we can take that measure into both of these, 
and well that's what we wanted to show this now two and three follow directly from this relationship and that if this is uh, if this measure is subtracted to the other side then that's part two and if um, this measure is non-negative then it says that mu of a is smaller than mu of mu of b is smaller than mu of a and that's what we wanted to show in part three and so it's a direct relationship there now for part d one the intersection of and this is this is a trick that we will use throughout these this series is that the finite union of sets a1 through an can be thought of as these and this creates little disjoint sets we have a1 we're going to union on you know the set a intersect a complement and then the union of a3 and then you know the intersection of a1 complement intersect a2 complement and so what this is doing is creating little disjoint sets that union to this bigger set here and since mu is finite additive when if you take mu of this set then it's just the addition of each of these individual sets but notice that here so when we go down this is this set mu of a1 mu of a1 but notice that a a2 intersect a1 complement is a subset of a2 right so the mu of this is less than the mu of a2 so that's where we get this less than and it's the same way for all the sets so this this sum is greater than this this union and this is for all sets you know a1 through an now here we're going to assume that it holds for infinity so the the union the infinite union of these sets can be thought of as this infinite union right it's actually the same thing that we did up here it just goes to infinity and those are the same um, and there it's a union of disjoint sets so and since uh, mu is uh, is on a sigma field right it's a measure on a sigma field then mu of this union is equal to the sum of this union and then since each each set so a1 you know comes down but a2 then you get these complements and it's a subset of a2 and then a3 and a4 and, and so it's very similar to what we went from here to here we go from here to here and then that's actually the theorem that we wanted to prove now one last example in this video let's let mu be a finite measure on a sigma field f now if a n is a, a member of the sigma field for uh, n equals 1 to infinity and the limit of these a n's is a we want to show that the measure of a is equal to the limit of mu of a n and so here's the answer or proof let note that this relationship holds and, and I'm going to actually point you back to a couple videos that I have on the limit infimum and limit supremum of sets it's actually turned out to be a pretty good darn video to understand limit supremum and limit infimum and we actually develop it using notation like this right so if we look at the set a n but then we intersect a n and then a n plus one and this can only be a little bit smaller than this set but if we union a n with a n plus one and a n it can only be a little bit bigger but then note that as n increases this is an increasing set right we're taking away one set of an intersection it can only be a little bit bigger but it turns out that it limits to the limit and femum of a n but since this limit exists the limit and femum and limit supremum equals the limit so this is just a and then we can look at this set here 
that it's a decreasing sequence to the limit supremum of an. And I really encourage you to go back and watch the videos I have on limit supremum and limit infimum. And then this is A, right? So if we take away sets, this union only gets smaller. So this is a decreasing sequence to the limit supremum. Now, so if they're subsets of each other, then the measure of them are less than or equal to each other. Then if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of everything, and that's what we do here, right? This piece is one of the pieces that we wanted to show. But here, and, and actually going from here to here, we're going to prove in the next video that since it's a measure on a sigma field, you can pass that limit in, right? So this limit goes through, and then the limit of this ends up being the limit uh, supremum of a n. But since the limit exists, then it's just A. And the same way here. So this limit can come inside there, and this limit becomes a limit supremum of A n, but since the limit exists, it's just A. But so this limit is sandwiched between the two. And so that says the this uh, limit as n goes to infinity of mu of A n is actually equal to the measure of A. And that's what we wanted to show. All right, well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.